Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. John Deere 6300. I think this one... See, if I had this tractor, I would actually prefer one with a cab. Because then, when it's cold, you can close the door. Uh, if it's nice and toasty and warm, and you're in shorts and so on, um, yeah, you, you could dress a bit differently. But there you go, there's our cultivator working away and it's doing an excellent job and the hired help is coping just fine with it as well overall I'm very pleased right so we've got that one going so the next job is going to be doing this now I don't have a bucket up here I don't have any money for a bucket either we've got a little bit of stuff over at the greenhouse fortunately something that we do have now is a high and low number on here we've got these high and low numbers so you at least you know historically like here the eggs went down to half price of what they were at uh, um, full price uh, if you look at soybeans they go down to almost a third of the price yes yeah, so it, it, it's much better having an idea of what the price range is on these things uh, because just the graph itself doesn't tell you a great deal like this one here 52 down to 33 Yes, there's a bit of a discrepancy between them, and it is, well, it's, it's, over, it's quite a bit over half. It's probably two-thirds of what that is, but the price difference is more insignificant on that. Silage over here, 152 to 188. Really, you could get away with selling, certainly when the price is in the middle over here. Like, if, if that price goes up a little bit more, we could get away with selling fairly soon, and we'd get some reasonable money. Grass in here, you could sell that any time of the year, and you're not really taking much of a hit, are you? So this is why I really wanted the high and low numbers. And I get where people were coming from saying, well, you don't know what the high and low numbers are going to be. No, but you do have the historical record of the high and low numbers. And now that we can actually see those numbers instead of just the chart without the numbers, I think it's a lot better. I, I really do. I, I really think this is a, a, a good move forward. Now, I want... Uh, wool, right there. Okay. Here I can see 1,200 all the way down to 750. And, yeah, we'd take too much of a hit. If we sold our wool now, we would, it would be too much of a loss. That's almost half price. So we definitely, with wool, we want to be waiting until it's up here at least. So uh, anything above 1,100, I would say, for wool. Uh, we, we definitely don't want to be dropping it below that. So we can't go and sell off our wool at the moment. It's just not going to be a viable option. Which means the only money maker I've got, I've got 300 euros right there. I don't have enough money to go and get, like, I've got the hired help working. And the hired help is going to use up the money that I've got. I don't have the money to go and do any fertilizing contracts because I don't have the fer I can't buy the fertilizer. I can't afford it. There is a plowing job that I could do there for four grand, which might actually be a good idea. Sowing jobs we can't do. Cultivating we could, but they don't generally make very much money. Uh, those jobs are generally break-even jobs, although they seem to have altered them. These definitely seem to have been adjusted. Like the, the money seems to have been tweaked upwards ever so slightly with cultivating with the, the latest patch in the game. All right, well, we'll try the plowing one first. The, um, we get the re reward reduced a little bit, and that's going to be on field eight. So I'm just going to borrow items right there. I don't remember where field eight is, so let's find field eight a minute. And then we've got that contract that we can go and do. So field eight is... Oh, that's that one over there. Right, so we need to go scooting across the map. So I'm just going to leave that one there for a minute, and then I'm going to go over to here. We've got a nice big old tractor right there. And I'll go and hitch on the front weight, and then the plough itself, and we can run over to field eight, and we can start some work. It's going to give us uh, just a couple thousand coming in for that. It's not huge amounts uh what we could also do is try and find another rare truffle because we are running out of money and we're not going to have enough money to be able to do 
this ploughing job and keep our cultivator running on our own farm at the same time. There's some more seed there. I didn't even notice that come out. Okay. I'm going to have to get a bucket and scoop some of this seed up. We've got a thousand litres of seed that has been scattered across the map. <laughs> We're going to want to go and gather some of that up. Because otherwise it's going to... Well, it's a waste, really. It's a complete waste. But we got to... Unfortunately, we've got to buy a bucket in order to be able to pick the stuff up. Because I don't think we've got anything else we can use. Uh, thinking about it. No, we don't. We don't have any other option. We're going to need to go and buy a bucket to collect that up. Which is a bit of a jolly nuisance, but we'll just have to live with it. Right, I'm going to go up this way. If I get this one going, then I need to attempt to find another rare truffle. Now, I think that there is a rare truffle up the top of the map up further from where we are. Not quite sure where. I'm pretty sure there is one up the top end of the map. Um, I'll show you once we get this one over. I want to get this one over and in the field and started. I'll do a pass or two on this top end. I won't worry about going down towards the lake and doing a pass down there. I'm going to hope that the hired help can cope with dealing with that and so that we don't have to worry about it. I just want to get this one over to field number eight. So we want to come up this way and... Oh, there is a mod that I got which changes the behavior of the crossings. Because at the moment, when you go over the crossing... Can you get through the fence here? No, there's uh, no gap through the fence. The moment when you go over the crossing, um, if a train is coming, the lights start flashing and almost instantly the barrier comes down. So if you're going over with a long trailer you can very often get your trailer caught by the barrier, and it is a bit of a jolly nuisance. This mod puts the lights flashing quite a bit earlier and gives you time to get across the crossing or, you know, stop. You'll see it flashing a lot earlier, so you've got time to stop before the train comes along. And then uh, the behavior in-game is that after the train has gone by, you wait for ages for the barrier to go up again. Now, I've never been able to understand why they had it like that. Why do you have to wait so long for the barrier to go up afterwards, yet as soon as the lights start going, down comes the barrier? It's, it seems like they, it, it's been set up in order to be able to catch you off guard with the barrier. And I don't really see the point of that. Like, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of point to having it that way. And... It doesn't seem to benefit. I, I cannot see the benefit of that. So what this mod does is it basically just reverses it. So instead of the long wait being after the train has gone by, the long wait is to start with, which does seem a lot better. It certainly seems like a much better idea, but I don't think I actually remembered to activate it on this map before I started. Right. i got a bit of overlap there in case the field has got a funny twist on the end up there. I got 150 euros left. So we want to, we're going to have a look over here. There's a little tiny bit that he's left there, but he's doing a really good job. Just working away here. That's fantastic. And we're going to go up here. So I believe there is, we're here on these houses here and we checked the swings here. I believe there might be a truffle up here or up here. One or the other of them. Right. I went and had a look at some people's comments. And there's one near the spinnery and there's one near the station. So I'm actually going to leave the Mahindra up here for now. And what we're going to do instead. Because both of our vehicles have now stopped. We've run out of money. Uh, there's one apparently near the um, spinnery. And there's one at a station. But I don't know which station it is. So it could be any one of these stations, and there's one near the spinnery. So the spinnery is down here. So I'm going to go and visit this one. It's somewhere around the spinnery. Somewhere around the spinnery, there is a rare truffle. So we're going to have a look around for this one, and then we want to see if we can find... I wonder if it's maybe near the cars. I guess it might be too obvious from the road. Uh... I don't know how well hidden they are. I don't think that they're, like, really well hidden or anything like that. And there's nothing there. 
No. Don't see anything here. I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna like spend ages looking for it. I'm just going to sort of walk around the outside of the building and have a quick scan, and then if we can't find it, we'll have another look somewhere else. Because uh, we got the three stations that we can go and check as well. Apparently, it might be one near the three station, uh, one of the stations. But I don't see anything here. Hmm. Did say the spinnery said near the spinnery or like round by the spinnery I don't see anything up there well right there isn't I can't I can't see one there so train station we, we we've got I mean the train station is just over here well there's one of them uh, there's a couple of train stations so quite where they might be around the train station I don't know but I said right from the start, I reckon the train station's probably got one. I also said that I thought that the docks over here would have one, but apparently they don't. Apparently there is not one on the docks. Um, let me have a look around here. I would say maybe up on the loading platform. You're going to have one. Up on here. I don't see anything. No. Jump up and down a bit. I see no cheese. We're cheeseless. Truffleless. It's truffles. Truffles, truffles, truffles. If I say truffles enough, I'll eventually remember that they're supposed to be truffles and not cheeses. Okay, I don't see anything here. Maybe at the next one. I don't want to spend too long hunting for these things because it's just going to get really boring me wandering around trying to find a cheese that. Uh, a truffle that doesn't actually exist. Let's come around here like this and see anything. No. No. Okay. We go to the next one. Ah! Right. I was. Bit, I was getting a bit. Um. Like, uh, I was wondering where this one was, the, this spinnery one. I thought, well, we'll, we'll have a, a, a widen my search. So I went round in a circle around the outside here. I know technically this is a supermarket over here. I thought, well, maybe it's sort of further out. And, um, yeah, I was well, I was actually coming in through this way because I thought maybe it's up against this building here because this is, like, next to the spinnery. And I see it right here next to these. So there's that one. Actually, ooh, I need to press R on there. You found a rare truffle. There are four more. So there's ten grand, which is fantastic. So I'm going to, first of all, go and start these bad boys up again. Hired help can get going in there. And the hired help can get going here as well. Off you trot. Fantastic. So we get the money from there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next station and have a look around on here. So I haven't actually been to the next station yet. So we want to have a bit of a look and I spied it out of the corner of my eye over there. I feel I, I actually feel I should deserve a pat on the back because normally I can't see these things. So they're right in front of me. I have people yelling at the screen that it is there and I spied it right there right out of the corner of my eye. So I'm actually really pleased with that. AI Worker D has completed their task. Right, well, we'll go and have a little chat with AI Worker D in a minute. Uh, maybe I need to crouch down. There we go, there we go, there we go. Right. You found a rare truffle. There are three more to go. So there's 20,000 euros that we have now added to our total. So it's not you. It is as I suspected. The worker has... It can't cope with the triangle fields. But they've never been able to cope with triangle fields like that. They always seem to get a bit confused about it. So now that we've done the top bit of the field, if we start down here, it should be fine to finish off all of the rest of it. And I think two truffles is enough today. We will try and hunt out the remaining three some other time. I'm going to bring this one back over here and just start 
work on there. I really do like this cultivator. It's this very small set of harrows. This could be a homemade device right here. This could actually be a homemade set of harrows. It really could. I've used harrows like this, actually. Not quite like, not, not the actual frame that they're on, but the actual harrows themselves. Um, a few of them just sort of bolted together. I've used them only once, just once, but I have used them. And they're actually quite good. It, you used to get sections of um, harrow like that, the, the frame like that. I just like, you've you got those three sections on the back there, which you act, uh, are doing the actual work. Uh, you'd have two or three of those chained together for horses to use as well. Like, that particular type of harrow has been used for a very long time, before tractors started dragging stuff around. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's tried and tested. It does work. We know this because it's been done for hundreds of years. Anyway, I want to go down to here. I want to get that one. And I want to get that seed drill on. So I'm not going to do very much around the edges of the seed drill at the moment. We're just going to hook this one on. We've got very little fuel. I feel like I need to do something about the fuel situation. Sometime when I'm down into... We, we're all right for fuel at the moment. But I'm definitely going to need to get some pretty soon. Or we're just going to conk out in the middle of the field. And then we're going to be a bit... You know, embarrassed about that. We don't want to do things like that. So if I come on up there, and I will start from this position right here. But what I'm going to do before I start on that, let me go to this one. Actually, I'll leave it right there, like that. And I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to make sure that I've got any bits that need to be cultivated up here. Bits that might have been left is that bit right there. It's only that bit. All the rest has been done. It's done actually done a really good job of it. So if I just grab that bit there like that, and then come whizzing back down here like lunatic. I'll let that one carry on. Contract on field eight is twenty percent completed. Oh! Is that a new I don't know if that's one of the mods that I've got that because I've got a couple of mods now that assist you with various contract things. So I don't know if that's sort of a, just a, a notification that comes up to tell you that it's uh, X amount completed each time because of um, because of one of the mods, or if that's a new updated feature for the 1.3 update that we had. It could be either, to be honest. It really could. So I'm going to just do an outline on the edge of the field, just on this top bit. And then I'll start the hired help working. And it should start planting in our wheat across this bit of field that we've got. At least that's the plan. So I'm going to bring you down through here like this. And we've got a nice straight line up through there. That's perfect. And I won't do too much over the other end over here going to need to worry about it just just down a little bit i'm going to need to keep a half an eye on this because what we really don't want happening is the cultivator cultivating up the wheat seed because it will if you have the cultivator go over what you've planted with wheat seeds then it will just remove them and and you've got to start again which would be a bit of a jolly nuisance it's also going to cost us money if it does that and we don't want to do that. We don't want to be losing money on this. We want to be gaining money. I've still got to buy a combine to be able to harvest this. And that's, that's something that we haven't got to yet. That's, that's on the to-do list, is buying an actual combine so I can harvest this wheat. I mean, I do have the winter to be able to earn the money. So we've got wool that is accumulating that we'll be able to sell if we want to. And we've got a few other bits and pieces as well. So there is our seed drill, planting our wheat. It's looking absolutely fantastic. Once that one is well underway, I don't know if I should go looking for some more rare truffles. We'll go and check on our plow in a minute. We could always get another contract underway. 
I haven't been doing a lot of contracting because I've been mostly focusing on our own property, but maybe we could do a little bit. We've got some time now. We've, I mean, I've got my own cultivator. I could go and set that one going on a small job, but really, the, the bigger cult, the, the bigger cultivating jobs, you really want to be borrowing the machinery because I think ultimately it would end up being more profitable, even though you've got to borrow, you are paid to borrow the machinery from the farmer because of the speed that you'd be able to get the job done. Right. That's actually looking really good now. We're going to need to roll this afterwards, and unfortunately the roller we've got is a grass roller. Which means that it won't be any good for this. We would need the other type of roller. See? Right there. That blue is needs rolling. Hmm. At least we no longer have needs lime. It does underneath all the rest of it, but not where we are. There's a bit down there, but that's not actually our field. That's the existing bit of field, so we don't need to worry about that either. Uh, right, well, let's leave both of these to carry on with their work at the moment, and we will go back over here and have a look at this one. Nice new Holland. What have we got? We've got a T7 going on there. It's actually a really nice tractor. It's a bit of a big tractor compared to what we've got up at our place at the moment. We won't be able to afford a tractor like that on this series. Now, we might build up to being able to afford something like that in the next series if we can chop down enough trees or something like that it'd be quite cool if we could but because it's hardcore and it's on the difficult economy settings and things like that it's highly unlikely about the only way that we would be able to afford a track like that is if we get one on sale like here, 75,000 for that class Aryan right there. And that goes up to a 200 horsepower tractor, which is pretty good. The stayer right there is 50,000. 135 horsepower. So you've got some options. Like we, we, You do get good options. 95,000 for the combine. What's the cheapest combine? 75 for that little one over there. Or mods. What mod combines have we got? Have we got anything cheaper than that? 430. We've got 55 over there. That's the one. That's more like what we're going to be going for. 55,000 for that one right there. It's got a 5,600 litre tank. This one down here is only 4,900. So it's a bit of a smaller tank. Uh, the header. We'll need a header as well. Because this header here is 25. So it makes 100 for that combine. Whereas the wee one up this way is only 20,000. We can have a combine for 75,000. It's not the cheapest machine that we'd have to buy, but I think 75 grand is, is still fairly reasonable. I think we could go with that. This is quite the plow, actually. He's pulling along. It's a six-furrow reversible plow. That is a fair size. No, it's not. Sorry, my bad. That's a seven-furrow reversible plow. That is quite a beast. That is quite a monster of a plough. That that does require a fair amount of oomph to drag that through the soil, you know. Anyway, you, you carry on doing that. And how are you doing up this way? You are doing a brilliant job. We're going to have to stop our seed drill before too long, I suspect. Because he's going to get a bit too close to this and we want to be able to cultivate in the lime that we've gone and spread along the top of it so we're going to have to watch for that hired help is doing a magnificent job here so we've spent 800 well 750 coming up to 800 euros now on hired help we've got three hired helps going and we've spent close to 800 in total on those three lots of hired help so the plowing job will cover all of the hired help expenses, which is good. So we, we'll end up with positive money even after paying for the hired help up here on our land as well. We, that is a really good thing. That's a good positive, that is. Now, this bit up here, did the tractor go to the... Yes, he did. You can see right there, he went all the way to the end of the field before he turned around. 
So we've got some nice long runs coming up now. 880 litres. I think... I think we will run out of seed before we finish this field. Contract is now 40% complete. I like that. That counter coming up to tell us the percentage on the contract. That's actually quite good. So it's got a bit to go yet. The field's getting bigger down this end. Let me keep going. Uh, right, well, I've got all of these different jobs happening at the moment. Let's go back into contracts over here. I'm not doing those. I don't want to do supply and transport. Supply 90,000 litres of grapes to the supermarket for 12 grand. Uh, tomatoes, 23,000 litres. Straw, 32,000 litres. And you get 1,300. I don't know if you also get paid for what you supply. I would hope so, because otherwise these don't seem like you're going to be making very much money. And so I got that ploughing one active. Now, field six is fairly close by. No, field six is up the top. Yeah, field six is all the way up there. Field 13, 19, field 25. That's the small one. No, it's not. Where's field 25? Oh, that's all the way up there. I want one that's close by. Oh, field 19. Of course. Field 19 is the long one right next to dealership. I forgot about that. All right, let's go with the, this contract, this cultivating contract on field 19. We lose 800, and we'll see. This should now pay us a bit more money. It looks like they've tweaked the amount of money you get for the cultivating contracts. So I'm going to borrow items on that one. And then that one should be okay to be left unsupervised for a little bit. And we will go down here. I don't have a front weight for this particular job, but we've got quite a big cultivator. We will go over first and we'll... You are going to be all right with this cultivator, aren't you? That tractor definitely... I think it was just that the cultivator was stuck in the ground a bit. I don't think it was anything else. I'm a bit concerned, though. A bit concerned that it's going to cause us problems when we're trying to do this job. We like to do the jobs neatly and tidily and properly. Let's bring you up here. And I'll do a pass up here. I don't think I need to do more than that. So bring you all the way back up there like that. And lower it down. This is a shallow cultivator, so it shouldn't need too many horses to pull it along. I mean, the tractor itself is a 6230. It's not the most powerful of tractors. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It should, it, it should be able to cope with this cultivator without too much trouble. And that should be plenty of room for us to turn around as well. So I can bring that one up there like that and stop there. And now do a pass down this side of the field. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.